Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! <laughs> Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and let's get started with today's Guns N' Roses news. So we're still catching up from the last couple weeks and this one kind of surprised me. So Guns N' Roses uh, made an idiot writer off ESPN.com's list of most overrated bands. So there's a guy named Josh Webb Thompson. He just tweeted out on August 30th of this year the five most overrated bands according to himself. So number five was Pearl Jam, number four was Guns N' Roses, number three was The Doors, number two was U2, and number one was The Beatles. So one guy responded to him, he said, The Doors are number one, GNR, get the F out. The Beatles, are you even human? To which Josh said, GNR had maybe 1.2 good albums, Appetite was the best offering they had, and there's debate over my humanity. You know, a lot of these fans who say that Guns only had one good album, I doubt they've even listened to the Use Your Illusion records in its entirety. I mean, there's so many great songs off of both those records. Sure, there's a bunch of filler, but there's some great songs. Estranged, Coma, Civil War, November Rain, Don't Cry. I mean, the, The Garden, the list goes on and on. Breakdown. Um, but a lot of people responded to him over social media. In fact, there's a huge barrage of tweets at him if you guys want to go check those out. But let me know, do you guys agree with any of those overrated bands? I like Pearl Jam, but do I think, I think, you know, I think they've got a rightful place in rock and roll history. I don't know if I'm a huge, huge fan. Like, I don't know if they deserve their own radio station on Sirius XM. Uh, the Doors are a band that I never got until recently. As I got older, I've started to get more into The Doors. U2 is another band. Like I never really liked U2 a whole lot, but as I've gotten older, I've started to appreciate their music a whole lot. Uh, the Beatles, of course, are legendary. I mean, you know, there, there wouldn't be a lot of rock and roll bands you see today if it wasn't for The Beatles. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. We've also got some news concerning Steven Adler. So uh, no doubt bassist Tony Canal was spotted on his birthday at an Adler's Appetite show. So this is a photo that was posted on social media. I didn't even know these guys were friends, but I'm sure Guns N' Roses were a huge influence to a lot of people in no doubt. Now this was one of the most bizarre stories that came out. So there's been all this news about ACDC getting back together to record with Brian Johnson and Phil Rudd. And it came out this week that the upcoming ACDC record is going to feature Malcolm Young on the album. He's apparently going to be playing on every single song. So according to the music entertainment magazine Jam, they're reporting from a reliable source inside the ACDC camp that uh, previously unreleased guitar parts for Malcolm Young will be featured on the rhythm section of every song from the band's new rumored album. The report also alleges that the record will be dedicated to Malcolm. So... The late ACDC guitarist and co-founder died on November 18th, 2017 at the age of 64. A statement on the band's website at the time revealed that Malcolm had been suffering from dementia and passed away peacefully with his family by his, bed, by his bedside. Jam reports that Malcolm had recorded a number of songs with Angus in 2003 when the two lived together uh, between ACDC's Stiff Upper Lip and Black Ice album cycles. Phil Rudd, Cliff Williams, and Brian Johnson are allegedly joining Angus in the process of choosing which songs to use and recording their respective parts around Malcolm's takes. So in August, we had rumors that ACDC was back in the studio. A short time later, photo surfaced of vocalist Brian Johnson and drummer Phil Rudd together outside Vancouver's Warehouse Studios, which is where the last three ACDC records have been recorded. This sparked rumors that two members had rejoined the band after tumultuous periods away from the rest of the group. And of course, Johnson exited the band in 2016 after suffering hearing issues. While the, Rudd was charged with attempted murder and threatening to kill and possession of meth and cannabis in 2014. So most recently, their drummer Chris Slade said he hasn't seen the rest of ACDC since the end of their last rock or bus tour back in 2016. And the, the rumors of Axel being involved in ACDC's next record seem to have disappeared for the time being. So this was uh, something that came out of left field. So Slash's brother Ash ripped Limp Biscuit online. So Ash Hudson criticized Limp Biscuit for headlining over Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and Conspirators. So he posted this on social media. So Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash, uh, Slash's brothers Ash recently posted a photo of the poster of the Louder Than Life Festival on his Instagram page. He took a shot at Limp Biscuit for headlining over Slash. He said, how the F is Limp Bizkit headlining over Slash? What's wrong with this picture? I wouldn't want to even go on stage after Slash and Miles tear it up. He said, he also went on to say, uh, just make you seem really shit. Like how we still suck, we should break up again. 
So a fan commented and said, haha, I love Limp Bizkit as well as Slash too. To which Ash responded, I know you do, bro. I'm just saying, really Limp Bizkit more famous than Slash? Wow. So if you guys remember in 2015, Fred Durst took credit for reuniting Axel and Slash when there was that rumored reconciliation news going on. And then this isn't the first time that Ash has kind of opened his mouth and gotten in trouble. So when the rumors of a reunion were happening, he said that there was no reunion and that he said that he made some fat jokes about Axel and apparently Slash made him apologize. So this is the headlining, uh, this is the bands who are going to be playing the Louder Than Life Festival, Alice in Chains, Limp Bizkit, Breaking Benjamin, Slash, Seether, Blackstone Cherry, Skillet, and there's a number of other bands as well. You got Godsmack, Five Finger Death Punch, Shine Down, Nine Inch Nails, Deftones, Ice Cube, so there's some really good acts playing at this festival. So that does it for today's news, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and be sure to subscribe to GNR Central too. Also, go visit us on gnrcentral.com for the latest and greatest Guns and Roses news. Take care. Right now. What's going on? It's Alex Cross with Pokers and Blow, and you're watching GNR Central. Right on.